we will invade your city. And that's in the first couple of chapters of Bukhari. I'm just remembering that from memory. Um, so, so what we're seeing now is uh, an unstable man who, who takes these revelations so-called and, and it's sending him crazy. And it's not like the revelations of the Bible where people were saying. We're seeing a man who assassinated people from Ibn, Ibn Ishaq. We're seeing a man from the Quran who beat his wife and encouraged beating wives because it says it in the Quran. We see a man who made revelations to fulfill his sexual needs. So what fruit would come from such a man? Only, only, only violence from such a, a bad man. But yet Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, um, this is Jesus Christ, I show you Jesus. Compare that with Jesus' life. Then cometh the earth city of Samaria, which is called Sica, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey. This is John chapter 4. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples was gone away unto the city to buy food. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, who am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me a to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From where then hast thou the living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank from it himself, and his sons, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto her, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come there to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and saidest thou truly. The woman said unto her, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and yet... They say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when he shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worship shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such as worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, whom is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came the disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest with the woman, with her? So the Samaritans and the Jews were really against each other. They were really into racial fighting. And um, the Lord went into a Samaritan area and to a woman who'd had many men and was seen as a pariah in, even in her society. So the Lord crossed a, a, the violent conflict between the two cultures. He crossed also the prejudice against the woman who was hated even in her own culture. And he just brought love to the woman. And he wasn't preaching about war. He was preaching about we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's a, va that's a vast contrast to Muhammad, who is encouraging assassination of people, who is uh, inventing revelation to meet his own sexual needs, etc., who encourages wife beating, etc., yeah? So, uh, 
You can't compare Muhammad to Jesus. Jesus wins every time. Perfect, pure, holy Savior. And I read those verses to remind you again. Uh, John 6, 35, 48, I am the bread of life. The bread of life is about feeding the spiritual soul. John 18, 12, 9, 5, I am the light of the world. It's about helping the spiritual soul. John 10, 7, 9, I am the door. It's about spiritual life, opening the door to spiritual life. John 10, 11, 14, I am the good shepherd. It's about the shepherd dying for his sheep. John 11, 25, I am the resurrection of life. It's about giving people spiritual life and a new hope after death. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's about knowing Christ. And John 15, 1, I am the vine. It's about resting in Christ. There's nothing there in the teaching of Jesus that's a comprehensive list of Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of John that shows there was nothing to do with violence but all to do with uh, following, the, following um, the Lord and finding salvation in Him. And... Uh, Uh, and that's because the, the Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I mean, I just want to reiterate that. <coughs> uh, Jesus is God. It says in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counsel and Mighty God. Isaiah 7, 14, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us, Matthew 1, 23. Um, Jesus was eternally pre-existent, John 1, 1, 2, John 8, 58, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus reigns supreme over everything, including all creation, Colossians 1, 15, 20, John 1, 3. Jesus is to be worshipped, Matthew 2, 11. 14, 33, 28, 9, John 20, 28, Hebrews 1, 5, 9, Jesus forgives sins, Matthew 9, verse 2 to 6, Mark 2, verse 5 to 12, Acts 26, verse 15 to 18, Jesus gives eternal life, John 3, 16, uh, John 5, 39, 40, John 27, 10, 27, John uh, 20 to 31. Jesus claimed to be God, John 8, 38, 58, before Abraham was, I am, the same name used by God to refer to himself in Exodus 34, 3. Jesus demonstrated he was God, he had power over spiritual forces, Mark 1, 23 to 27. He had power over natural forces, Matthew 8, verse 23 to 27. He had power over sickness and de disease, Matthew 8, verse 1 to 3. He was power over death for others, Matthew 9, 23, 25. He has power over his own death, Matthew 17, 9. Others recognize Jesus as God, uh, Matthew 16, 16, Luke 9, 20, John 1, 1, 2, and 20, uh, John 20 to 31. So Jesus was God in the flesh, so you can't compare Muhammad, a false prophet, with the Son of God. There is no comparison. There's absolutely uh, no comparison whatsoever. Now I want to read this. Countless times uh, I'll just read a few. Matthew 4, 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, even the devil acknowledged Jesus is the Son of God. Matthew 4, 6. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God. Matthew 27, 40. And saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and build it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down. So even his enemies knew that he was saying that he was the Son of God. Matthew 27, 43. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. He will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. His enemies were acknowledging Jesus said that he was the Son of God. Mark 1.1, 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark 3.11, unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. So even the devil acknowledged that Jesus is the Son of God, the devils. Mark 15.39, and when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, 
He said, truly this man was the Son of God. I can go on and on and on. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you, that you believe the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So the claims of Christ by his disciples were that they said that he was the Son of God. So this is a different category of person than Muhammad. Muhammad was a guy who had sexual needs, needed women, invented revelation, who had crazy thoughts, and knew, and and who was tricked by Satan, and uh, who encouraged assassinations, who encouraged wife beating, and who married his adopted son's wife. All convenient. This is the man he is. But here we're dealing with a different category of person. We're dealing with the Son of God, who was holy and pure and perfect, and lived a life of love, as we see, showing it to a Samaritan woman who was rejected by her peers and crossed the divide of violence between the Jews and the Samaritans. So, uh, we, we didn't get into uh, the Quran, but now we'll get into the Quran and uh, Quran is is a is a very poor book. Theodore Nordek says about the Quran: chaotic confusion, prosaic, stiff in style, tedious sermonizing, rhetorical, never metrical. The rhyme on the whole a burdensome yoke. Superfluous verbiage. Syntax betrays great awkwardness. Tiresome effect of its endless iterations. So that dogma turns a defective literary production into an unrivaled masterpiece. In the eyes of the believer, Noldek, 1998, page 36. A very old scholar, Solomon Reinach. From the literary point of view, about the Quran, the Quran has little merit. Uh, declamation, repetition, plurality, a lack of logic and coherence strikes the unprepared reader at every turn. It's humiliating to the human intellect to think that this mediocre literature has been the subject of innumerable commentaries and that millions of men are still wasting time in absorbing it. Reinhardt, 1932, page 176. Mickel and Tock and Strong's Encyclopedia. The matter of the Quran is exceedingly incoherent and sententious, the book evidently being without any logical order of thought, either as a whole or in parts. This agrees with the dissolutory and incidental manner in which it is said to have been delivered. There are contradictions in the Quran. If Allah's word cannot change, Surah 634, 115.10.6, then how can Allah substitute one revelation for another? Surah 2, 106, uh, Surah 6, 16, 101. We could go into a lot of information there, but um, but I, I want to get into the Quran now just a, a little bit. Sorry about that. I thought someone was coming to the door. So in the Quran, it teaches these. It says in Surah 55, 56, uh, heaven is with chaste females whom no man has been with. Surah 55, 70, fair and beautiful woman in heaven. Surah 55, 72, 74, beautiful fair females guarded pavilion virgins. Surah 56, 
22, herb with wide, lovely eyes in heaven. Surah 55, 76, reclining on green cushions and beautiful mattresses. Surah 56, 34, 30, 58, on couches or thrones raised high, a special creation made them virgins loving. Surah 56, 17, immortal boys will go around serving with cups flowing with wine. So, Muhammad's Quran is very sensual. So that itself is going to produce a mindset for sensuality, a sexual desire in Muhammad's soldiers, in Muhammad's men. Then we have, then we have here a list of all the verses on the doctrine of war in the Quran. Now this was all, the Quran was only revealed over like a short period of time, 20 years, maybe a bit more. And within that short time, all these verses on violence, I'm going to just read out. Surah 2178, Surah 2179, Surah 2190, Surah 2191, Surah 2193, Surah 2194, Chapter 2, verse 216, Chapter 2, verse 217, Chapter 2, verse 218, uh, Chapter 2, verse 244, Chapter 3, verse 121. Uh, chapter 3 verse 1 2 2 chapter 3 1 2 3 uh, chapter 3 verse 1 2 4 chapter 3 verse 1 2 5 chapter 3 verse 1 2 6 chapter 3 verse 1 40 chapter 3 verse 1 4 1 chapter 3 verse 1 4 6 chapter 3 verse 1 5 2 these are all verses about jihad and that's how many verses there are in the quran a doctrine of war going out to fight there it is and I brought I never brought that up because I was just focusing in the debate on Muhammad but there are 149 sword verses to encourage war and violence now even if you get many of these verses in the context and you can do that you can get many of these verses in the context and uh, to be fair some of these are about self-defense but even when you've got all these verses in context it's clear that Islam is a religion based on war when you read uh, the Apostles uh, in the book of Acts Stephen in chapter 7 of Acts is killed stoned to death he doesn't pick up a sword to fight he just preaches Jesus died and rose again and he gets stoned to death by the Jews Paul gets converted chapter 9 of Acts goes around preaching and he is beaten black and blue everywhere he goes he doesn't lift a finger to fight he just preaches and then he's chipped off to Rome and he dies as a martyr we have we have information that Peter died as a martyr they never lifted a finger in violence they just preached the gospel um, but here we have tons of verses 149 verses of the Quran that are all about war so Muhammad's followers were trained and taught that they could go to war and fight Jesus followers in the book of Acts go and preach and get killed for preaching Muhammad's followers to spread their faith go and fight battles and wars and propagate the religion that way and that proof is there in the Quran okay so we have a lot of information there um, now you can get this paper I think it's Jay Smith uh, what is the religion of peace, Islam or Christianity? Now, do a study on apostasy. 
go and have a study just google apostasy in Islam and just go and study and you'll find that right throughout the history of Islam um, you will find uh, a good source uh, if you go on to Wikipedia and Google apostasy in, in Islam there's a whole history of his apostasy there and it's a very fair article it looks at various nations and cities etc where apostasy in Islam is uh, against the law and where people are killed and so even in Islam there is violence there if you convert to Islam and then you leave Islam you're in danger of death and that is in some Islamic countries now that is a direct influence from Muhammad example of encouraging assassination of anybody who doesn't agree with him okay doesn't specifically come from the the Quran it comes specifically from Muhammad's example of encouraging assassination and and if you go on the Wikipedia article underneath they give you historical sources uh, academic sources for and against what Wikipedia is saying so there are some really good academic material under there that you can go and use if you haven't got time um, you know don't it's not wrong to read Wikipedia if they've got really good sources and there's some good sources under the article there um, the consensus in this paper which is religion of peace Islam and Christianity okay 15% in 2001 saw Muslims saw themselves as radical, 70% nominal and 15% liberal. By 2002, radical had risen to 25%. By 2003, no polls were carried out. On February 19, 2006, 40% of Muslims are now radical. 20% supported the July 7th suicide bombers. Source, Peter G. Riddle and Peter uh, Cotterell, Islam in Conflict, Leicester, England, IVP, 2003, Chapter 10 and 12 and page 193. Also, lecture by Riddle on the theme, Muslim Views on the World, held at the London Institute of Contemporary Christianity and sponsored by the, the London Lecture Trust, October 23, 2003, Sunday Telegraph, February 19, 2006. So there is some academic source and a popular source from the Sunday Telegraph. Radical Islam is growing globally. Poll radicaliz uh, on radicaliz uh, radicalization by Pew International, March 2004. Turkey equals 31%. Morocco, 45%. Jordan, 55%. Pakistan, 65%. 80 million Muslims out of 140 million regard themselves as radical Muslims, i.e. those who are like ISIS, who want to start jihad. That's the Pew International Poll of 2004. 80 million out of 140 million Muslims polled. Impact since 9-11. With spiraling violence today, much of it penetrated, perpetuated by radical Muslims in the name of Allah, we need to take a closer look at what is happening in Islam in post 9-11. So there is a history of radical Islam. We have the Hassan al-Banna 1946 Muslim Brotherhood, the Sayyid Quitib 1906 to 1966, in the shade of the Quran is a milestone, Abu al-Mawudi Jamaat Islama, uh, Ahmad Zawari Islamic Jihad, Osama bin Laden al-Qaeda, and 1970s President Hezbollah named uh, Mohajurin Hizb ul Tahir. The radicalization of modern Islam, Yusuf al Qadari, moderate yet out of the closet, suicide bombers, wife beating, homosexuals. In other words, uh, from 1948 we have these various groups here that have been encouraging radical Islam around the world. And their kind of views was polled by Pew International and 80 million out of 140 million agreed with the kind of radical, violent Islam that, that Muslims 
say that the Quran and Islam doesn't teach when when it does. Now I want to say I did not ask to be part of the debate with Adam Rashid. He invited me so just to let the police know this is a scholarly rebuttal of Adin Rashid okay so let's read a few verses so it says there are verses of peace that the Muslims use Surah 2 256 for there is no compulsion in religion the law of abrogation Surah 2 106 16 101 that which we give we give something better Surah 2 190 193 those who fight you do not transgress limits slay them wherever you catch them and fight them until the parallel prevail faith prevail faith in Allah so the Muslim said this is peace verse but then you look and then the reverse that contradicts it so you have moderate interpretation and you have radical interpretation of these kind of crazy verses so moderate interpretation so sort of 5 31 32 raven and blood of Abel we ordain for the children of Israel that if anyone slew a person it would be as if he slew the whole people and if anyone saved a life it would be as if he saved the life of the whole people so there Muslims use that to say look Islam's about love but then the radical interpretation surah 5 31 32 we ordain for the children of Israel that if anyone slew a Muslim it would be as if he slew all Muslims and if anyone saved a Muslim it would be as if he saved the life of all Muslims so people see the radicals see it is that that verse is about Muslims the Medina sword verse Surah 9 5 but when the fo forbidden months are passed then fight and slay those who join other gods with Allah wherever you find them beseech them seize them lay in wait for them with every kind of ambush sword verse against Christian and Jews Surah 9 29 make war upon such of those to whom the scriptures are being given as believe not in Allah or in the last day and who forbid not what Allah and his apostles are forbidden until they pay tribute methodology of sword verses Surah 47 4 when you encounter the unbelievers strike off their heads until you have made a great slaughter among them Surah 839 and fight them on until there is no more tumult or oppression and there prevail justice and faith in Allah response for those who die in jihad Surah 474 let those who fight in the cause of Allah you sell the life of this world for the hereafter to him who fighteth in the cause of Allah whether he is slain or gets victory soon shall we give him a reward of great value Surah 47 4, 6 but those who are killed in the way of Allah he will never let their deeds be lost on admit them to paradise so here we see the verses very clearly that Muslims have verses that you can interpret peacefully but then you have the contradictory verses and, and that's where the problem is Must, how should we use these verses to be exegeted must use the example of Muhammad his biography Siratul Rasul Allah is saying Hadith the, the Maghazi 29 battles and fought 39 battles planned so in other words, if we look at the biography of Muhammad, which I did before, we see all these battles. You have the, the battles with the Jews, which uh, Radim Ashi mentioned, 624, after Badur, Battle of Badur, 625, after Ud, 627, after the trenches. So these various battles, and we're going to go into that in more detail. So, what we've looked at there is a lot of information there about the Quran and about how Muslims try to exegete and make it softer, but how there are Quranic verses that encourage violence. And you have to get every of these verses in their context. We can't do that in this talk. But I have done it with Ali Dawa. I've done some talks, five talks, on this uh, using Ali Dawa. And, and going into the sword verses in context but here we see there's a mass full of information about violence in the Quran and whichever way you interpret it it's encouraging the, a doctrine of war 
and uh, that that's that's spilled out into Islamic extremism throughout the world today where a poll showed that 80 million Muslims out of 100 and odd Muslims, million Muslims, uh, side with this radical interpretation of Islam, which I don't think is radical, I think it's just what Islam teaches. Now, uh, in the debate, Rashim counters me by... Now, I didn't go into all this stuff. I didn't go into all the, ra the history of radical Islam. I didn't go into... Um, the sword verses. Uh, I just pumped, keep punching on Muhammad, and I only had a bit of information that I had, so I had to be very careful what I said. But here we're unpacking more. 